The UK government is planning to construct a $25 billion super bridge across the Irish Sea, connecting Scotland to Northern Ireland. The idea for an Irish Sea bridge has been around for many decades. Such a connection would vastly cut transit times between Scotland and Northern Ireland, turning an expensive two and a half hour long ferry ride into an affordable 30 minute long car or train ride. In addition, such a bridge would have the benefits of a sheltered coastline and well-protected water. There are two main proposals for such a bridge. The first is between Port Patrick, Scotland and Larne, Northern Ireland. This bridge would be about 45 kilometers long and would have good transport links. The second is between Mole of Kintyre, Scotland and Torhead, Northern Ireland. This bridge would be only 25 kilometers long, but would have terrible transport links, forcing cargo and passengers all the way up the Kintyre Peninsula. For this reason, it has been dismissed. The idea for an Irish Sea Bridge was revived in early 2018 by Professor Alan Dunlop from the University of Liverpool. He endorsed a combined road and rail crossing between Port Patrick and Larne, suggesting that such a connection would increase trade between the two countries, creating a Celtic powerhouse and increasing unity. The bridge could link up to the UK's high-speed rail network, allowing for quick transportation throughout the British Isles. It could form a tourism corridor between Ireland and Great Britain and boost local Scottish ports making the currently neglected region of southwest Scotland a tourism and maritime hub. The bridge would also serve as a feat of engineering, giving the UK worldwide recognition and proving that it is capable of carrying out such a mega project. It would also serve as an alternative to flights between Great Britain and Ireland, creating a positive environmental impact. Eventually, the bridge could be completely paid for through toll revenue making it an economic investment. Dunlop's proposal quickly gained the support of both the Scottish and Northern Ireland governments in March 2018. In Northern Ireland though, there was some competition between the Mid and East Antrim and Ards and North Down districts, both of which wanted their respective towns, Larne and Donadee, to be the bridge's end site. Ultimately, it was decided that, if constructed, Larne would be the end site, as it already had the infrastructure. Once research into the project began though, several serious problems arose. First of all, the section of sea separating Scotland and Northern Ireland is notoriously deep, reaching up to 160 meters in places. And then there's Beaufort's Dyke, a natural trench right in the way of the proposed bridge. It sits 3.2 kilometers wide and drops 300 meters into the sea. And unfortunately, it also serves as the UK's largest offshore munitions dump. Since World War II, approximately 1 million tons of hazardous weapons have been dumped onto its seabed. Construction in this area would risk displacing or detonating the weapons. In addition, weather in the Irish Sea can get highly treacherous. This would result in many bridge closings and yet another engineering challenge. Even more, there would have to be major infrastructure improvements on the land, especially in Scotland. The roads connecting Port Patrick to Stranraer and the A75 highway are narrow and twisted. They would have to be seriously upgraded. In addition, the railways from Stranraer to Ayr and Dumfries would need major improvements. Lastly, the project's $25 billion of funding would have to come from somewhere. However, these problems are surmountable. Engineers have brainstormed that, to cross Beaufort Dyke and other deep areas, the bridge could sit on floating platforms connected to the seabed with tension cables, similar to the bridges being constructed in Norway. Or the connection could be an underwater tunnel attached to floating pontoons or tethered to the seabed. Another option is to construct a tunneled section. There are a lot of ideas. If cautionary procedures are followed, the weapons in Beaufort Dyke will be unaffected. The necessary road and rail improvements in Scotland are relatively small. Lastly, funding is attainable. In August 2018, Jane Morris, the former deputy speaker to the Northern Irish Assembly, suggested that funding possibilities for the bridge were vast 
with potential sources including the European Investment Bank, the Trans-European Network, Horizon 2020, or even China. Aware of the project's benefits, in 2019, Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, and Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK, both expressed their support for the bridge. However, with the Prime Minister having supported several unpopular bridge proposals in the past, including the Garden Bridge across the River Thames and the English Channel Bridge, the project immediately came under fire, with many people calling it ridiculous and absurd. However, Johnson still supports it. In February 2020, British government officials were tasked with scoping out the cost of building the bridge and determining its feasibility. Even with the coronavirus pandemic, the UK government has remained committed to the project. On June 5, 2020, Downing Street confirmed Boris Johnson's commitment to the bridge. The Irish Sea Bridge has the potential to boost Scotland and Northern Ireland's economies, give the UK worldwide recognition, and increase national unity. However, its projected $25 billion fee could be used for many other projects that would likely help Scottish and Northern Ireland citizens more than the bridge ever would. For this reason, many people believe it would be a waste of money, yet, as Johnson believes, with, with infrastructure projects, finances is not the issue. The issue is getting popular demand. Whether the Irish Sea Bridge will ever gain popular support and be constructed, we will just have to wait and see. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe. Also, remember to check out the comments and join the conversation. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.